Hey everyone, Amin here with AI Plays. Today, we're covering gamma correction. Let's get started. To recap, so far we've covered how a camera converts light into a bare domain image, how to correct dead pixels, how to compensate for black levels, how to adjust for lens shading, what an anti-aliasing filter is and how to apply one, how to apply auto white balance gain control, and finally, how to convert the bare domain image into a full RGB image. If you've been keeping up with the series, you know that the result after color filter array interpolation was pretty dim. The purpose of gamma correction is to fix this kind of issue by adjusting the brightness of the image. There's three different types of gamma correction that I'll go over in this video. This is the formula for the first one. The corrected image is equal to the original image to the power gamma. In other words, the resulting image is the result of taking the value of every pixel in the original image to the power of some correction factor gamma. Obviously, this is going to result in some values exceeding 255, which means we need some way to address that. For this first technique, we just simply clip the values to be between 0 and 255, and then round them all to the integers. Let's have a look at the code for the first type of gamma correction. The inputs are the CFA image from the previous model, where we just transitioned to RGB, and gamma correction as a correction factor. The output is the gamma corrected image of type uint8. First, we change the data type of the CFA image to uint16 to allow for larger values produced in gamma correction. Then we apply the gamma correction, which, thanks to NumPy's built-in array functionality, just requires taking the entire matrix to the power gamma. Finally, we can clip the new image to be between 0 and 255, and return the image after changing the data type. As you can clearly see by this output, type 1 gamma correction works. Quite well, in fact, actually. From the original dim and dusty RGB image, we now have this picture with strong and bright colors. It was pretty fast too, it only took a few seconds. The problem is that type 1 gamma correction is just far too sensitive. This is the result of using a gamma value of 1.1. Now look at how much the result changes just by changing gamma by 0.05 to a gamma value of 1.15. And now have a look at gamma value 1.20. Image signal processing pipelines are applied in the same way to every image taken by a camera, so they need to be able to work well regardless of the lightness level of the raw image. A gamma correction that needs a fine-tuned gamma for each different image is just not practical for use in a real camera. To address this issue is very simple. We start in the same way as in type 1 gamma correction, by taking all values in the original image to the power sum correction factor gamma. But now we use scaling instead of thick. The reason we faced an issue last time was because of how we handled large values. See, when you take large numbers to exponential powers, a lot of them end up exceeding 255 in value. By clipping the data, we took all of these large values and set them to 255, which doesn't take into account variability in the data. For example, 110 to the power 1.2 is roughly 300, while 255 to the power 1.2 is roughly 770. This means when clipped, all pixels in the original image with values from 110 to 255 just get set to 255 in the corrected image, completely white. Instead of this, we use scaling. What that means is we take the maximum value of the image and divide all values by this number. In doing so, we now have all of the values in the image in the range of 0 to 1. Now, by multiplying the scaled range of values by 255, rounding down all values to be integers, we have a full image that has been scaled by brightness intensities, while also remaining usable in most lighting conditions by not being so sensitive to extreme values. However, this type of gamma correction has one very important factor to note. Larger values of gamma result in dimmer images, while smaller values result in brighter images. Why? Because larger values are more heavily affected by exponents than smaller values, and we divide by the largest value after the transformation for scaling. For a very realistic example, take a pixel with value 50 in an image that has all integer values from 0 to 255. 50 to the power 1.2 divided by the max value of 255 to the power 1.2. The whole thing times 255 is roughly 36. This means that the pixels with values ranging from 0 to 50 in the original image are now compressed to a range of 0 to 36. And the greater the value of gamma, the greater the compression. Going with the same example, if you change gamma to 2, the final range becomes 0 to 9. 
This graph is a more visual representation of this kind of gamma correction. The x-axis represents the original pixel value, and the y-axis represents the corrected pixel value. And the different colored lines show the results of the gamma correction mapping with different values of gamma. Let's focus on this purple line, representing gamma equals 2. As 2 is greater than 1, we are expecting that the pixel values will decrease overall, and the image will get dimmer. And we can see from this chart that that is exactly what happens by examining this point circled in red. This point shows that for pixels in the original image with brightness intensities of 120, the corrected pixel value will be 50. And by examining the purple graph to the left of this point, we can see that all pixel values in the original image with brightness intensities ranging from 0 to 120 were compressed to be between 0 and 50, making the image darker overall. A similarly expected result can be observed from looking at gamma equals 1 fourth. Brightness intensities from 0 to 50 get expanded to the range of 0 to 170. Let's look at the code for the second type of gamma correction. The code is pretty much exactly the same, except this time, instead of running mp.clip on the image, we now extract the maximum value using mp.max, and then apply the scaling formula. Finally, reset the values back to unit 8. As I mentioned before, gamma values greater than 1 make the image dimmer. For example, using gamma equals 1.2, you can see that the image is much darker. Similarly, when you set gamma equals 0.8, you can see that the image is starting to look much better. The second type of gamma correction works very well and can be used in most lighting conditions. As a matter of convention though, we want greater values of gamma to result in a brighter image. And to achieve this, all we have to do is change the formula to use 1 over gamma instead of just gamma. A good value for gamma often used in some high quality images is 2.2. When we apply this gamma value, you can see that the final resulting image has gotten pretty close to what we would actually expect from a real camera. As a final note, officially the next step in the image signal processing pipeline is the color correction matrix. However, the main purpose of the color correction matrix is to rescale the data from a higher order data type, like uint16, down to a more compressed data type, like uint8. However, since we chose to rescale the data to uint8 instead of uint16 at the end of gamma correction, we can basically just skip over the color correction matrix. And that's it for today. Next time, we'll cover color space conversion. Have a good day, everyone.